friends with some of them. Just strip you it You should back. find something else to work with. Now, after that very insightful discussion, Jacqueline, we have to get straight into our chat with Samantha. Yes, let's. First gracing our screens on X Factor, this ARIA-winning artist has also played our favourites on Home and Away and Neighbours, but she hasn't stopped there. Releasing an incredible collaboration with Models Prefer, her collection became an instant hit. We're here to chat all things beauty, acting, and her music career. So thank you for chatting with us, Samantha Jade. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you have done so many incredible things, not just mentioning the ones we just rattled off, <laughs> but you've also done, you know, child modelling, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you have a career highlight? I yeah, I I've been thinking about this writing this record because this record's been all about kind of, you know, my career and the things I've learned and gone through and there's so many amazing moments I mm. think, you know, so it's hard to to answer it, but I mean obviously being nominated for a, a Logie or an Aria like those moments are incredible because they're recognition which is nice. Yeah. Um especially the Aria because it's by your peers, you know, mm. which is really quite amazing um but I would say I think definitely when I toured with One Direction that was just like insane (laughs) like I just couldn't get over these stadiums I would walk out and I would be like I can't even see the back like that's how big this is it's crazy Um, so yeah that was a real moment in my life yeah yeah I can imagine and (laughs) sticking with the music I mean back to in your X Factor days. Yeah. What made you try out for the show? Well, I had kind of been in the industry for a really long time. I had moved to LA when I was about 15 uh, with my parents and my brothers and my whole family. And I had been in the industry from the time I was 15 to the X Factor when I was 25. So for wow. me, it had been 10 years, like for me doing all the, all of the behind the scenes yeah, stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I felt like I was kind of known in the industry and had all that under my belt. And then I felt like it was time to be seen by the public. And I, I did my research and like Guy Sebastian and Kylie Minogue and, you know, Natalie Imbruglia and Nat Bass. It was all these people that had come from TV shows, you know, mm. whether that be a singing TV show or Neighbours or Home and Away, yeah. <laughs> that was something that I thought uh, very seriously about because I thought obviously Australia likes to be part of someone's success from the ground up and I mm. knew that I had to tackle it that way. Mm. Definitely. And so you write a lot of your own songs and you also write songs for other people. Yeah. Where do you find most of your inspiration? It's so interesting because I think as a songwriter you're always, when you're hearing stories from someone or you're watching some thing or you know or even your own experiences I always write down little like ideas in my phone so I've got these massive like (laughs) notes that that just goes and goes and goes and goes (laughs) and it's literally just titles and random song lyrics and so it comes from anywhere and I think a lot of the time it's how you're feeling that day Mm -hmm. you know a lot of the time you go in and you're like I want to write something happy or I want to write something sad or whatever you're experiencing or depending on the chords that someone starts playing in the room as well. If you play sad chords, you're not going to write a happy song. So, (laughs) yeah, it's always from a different place. So are these just like random light bulb ideas? I imagine, you know, waking up at 3 a.m. and grabbing your phone. Sometimes I do and sometimes I have these random melodies come to me like I'll be, you know, I'll hear someone say something and that I sing it in my head and then I call my voicemail and leave myself a voice note or something like that. that. Yeah. (laughs) And it's so random because that is, is sometimes how the magic happens, you know, because you're like, you forget about it and you're like, actually, that was really smart. That was really great. (laughs) Yeah. People be like, who who are you talking? Oh, just, just myself. Yeah. Leave me a note. (laughs) Exactly. So you were the first female to ever win the Australian X Factor. Yeah. How was that and kind of the whole journey after X Factor? Oh, my gosh. that I remember when they told me that because I didn't actually know that. And when they said you're the first female to win, I, I mean, it was even more empowering. Mm. So I was like, oh, especially after the journey I'd had in the industry, I felt like, yes, that's such a great thing. And I love that. And I can put that as part of my little resume now too. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, X Factor was tough. It was really, really tough because mm. you're putting yourself out there and you're kind of like, here you go, judge me. And you, you know what I mean? Like you're giving yeah. people permission to do that. Um, so you have to be ready for what comes with it, which is something you're never ready for actually. Mm. Um, but it was a great experience and I learned a lot because it's very fast moving. Mm. They're basically like, you know, you, you get your song choice, I think on the Saturday or Sunday and you're performing it by the Tuesday. So you've got to learn the lyrics, learn the choreography and perfect it all in that time. Yeah. Which is not a lot of time when you think about it, not with, you know, compare, compared to now when I have, you know, this song I wrote in January, it's coming out now. So you've got a lot of time now nowadays. But it was tough. It was a interesting show, learnt a lot, but I'm very <laughs> grateful for my experience on the show because that really broke my career. So mm. I'll always be grateful for it. Mm. And to top off your your big win, your single also shot to number one, which is insane. Yeah. <laughs> that just must have been such a crazy moment for you. Oh, my gosh. I – for being in the industry for that long too, it was like – I can't tell you that the day that they told me, because the ARIA chart comes out a few weeks later, so you have to wait. Or I don't, I don't remember how long after, but it's quite a while after. And I, I remember I was in Melbourne and I was doing um, like promo the next day and mm. I was in this hotel room and I just started bawling my eyes out because I was like, oh, it happened. Because you always say like I hope something happens and I hope I get a number yeah. one and you don't actually know that's going to happen. And that moment for me was just like a full circle of I did it, yeah. you know. it was Yeah, it was an incredible moment. And so you've got your new single that's just come out. Yes. And we got the pleasure of having a private show recently oh, yeah. in the building. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the single? It's a new kind of vibe for you. So how did you get to the new sound and all of that? Yeah. It's, um, you know, I feel like I'm just doing what I've always wanted to do. Aww. And that's really nice. That's yeah. a nice place to, to sit. Um, when I started in the industry, when I was 15, 16, I was so influenced by Brandy and by JLo at that time and by 3LW and TLC and, wow. you know, Christina Aguilera yes. and all, the all of the, <laughs> all the good stuff, Usher and Justin Timberlake and those kind of pop, you know, songs that sit under that kind of urban umbrella. Mm -hmm. And I loved that influence of, you know, kind of urban drums and like urban productions with like pop melodies. And so that's kind of just what I've kind of gone back to. And it makes sense to me because it's what inspired me. So it's so fun. I mean, I, I wrote this song in, in January. So I've had it for a really long time. So it feels really fun to finally be talking about it because for yeah. so long you're not allowed to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like those people on The Bachelor and stuff. I'm like, how do you guys? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It must Take be really, lips. really yeah. hard. Yeah, because it's really tough not to be like, I've got this new song and I'm really proud of it and I love it and it's about this. <laughs> um, so it feels nice to actually be finally doing that. Yeah, now we're finally on board and yeah, be able to like, yeah. talk to you about it. <laughs> exactly. And the hype comes back. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And you And you go back to what you felt in the studio that day and um, yeah, it's just it's just nice to kind of have something out there that I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you started, you know, your singing career 15, 16. Did you ever think yeah. that acting would be chucked in the mix as well? I when I moved to LA, it was kind of like when I got my record deal with Jive. One of the things they did was put me with a agency, so I was signed to William Morris at the time. So you basically kind of do that, and then you kind of do the rounds of acting auditions, which oh. is absolutely petrifying. <laughs> I mean, I can't even tell you how scary it is, especially when you're not an actor. And they're like, here you go, here's a little script. Try try going in. You're <laughs> I like, know. I don't get it. You know, like all I know is the highlighted part is my part, but I, I don't get this. <laughs> you know, that's all I know. Um, but I think that's how you learn, you, you know, on the job and, and by putting yourself in really uncomfortable, awkward situations, you always come out learning something. So – I did the rounds a little bit in LA, but I was so focused on my music that that took a back seat. And then when I came home and after the show, they kind of talked to me about this Kylie role. Mm. And I was quite nervous about it because I had been compared to Kylie so much because I think of our stature and, um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't know what else. So everyone thinks we look alike and they were like, Oh, you know, 
do you want to come audition for this role? And mm. I was like, oh, I was sceptical because I thought, oh, I get the comparison so much. Is it the right thing to do? And I thought actually it might be the absolute right thing to do because then it shows this is a role that I'm playing and this is me yeah. being me. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was so fun and I, I loved it. When I put the wig on, I was like, oh. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I do look like her. I get it in that moment, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, just it was so fun because I played eighties Kylie, which was yes. before yes. I was around, you know. So I didn't have anything to pull from. Yeah. I had to go on YouTube and and watch all these interviews, and she never really spoke about Michael. They were very mm. private in mm. that way. So I had to try and find as much as I could online. Um, and it was yeah, it was a great experience. It really was. <laughs> fabulous in it as well oh, yeah <laughs> thank you thank you so on top of everything that we've already spoken about that you've yeah. done with your acting your singing you also found time to collab with models prefer <gasps> yes for your range oh, how so was it creating your own line i loved it it was a dream come true i've always been the makeup girl like Everyone that knows me, um, I'm the girl who does the their makeup and hair. So, like, my mum, I used to do her makeup and hair. Wow. Her friends would be like, oh, I'm going to a ball or this, you know, a mm. corporate thing, and they'd come over and I'd do their hair and makeup for <laughs> – I used to do my dancers hair and makeup. Like, oh, I'm the go-to girl. So, for <laughs> me, it just felt super normal and natural. Yeah. And, um, and I – just loved it and we it's very complicated because we did that for a year because it mm. takes a long time mm. so because you you've got to feel it on your your hand and go oh I don't know I don't like the texture it's too powdery or it's too creamy or whatever it may be the color has to be right so you're looking at all these Pantone sheets and going oh that's a bit too this or that's a bit too that it takes a long time so it was a really by the time it came out I was like oh my gosh thank god for that because <laughs> it was just such a long process but it's one of the best things I've ever done because to have your own makeup range, I think I was the first singer in Australia to do that, wow. which was so cool, yeah. like such a cool experience. And um, and people still say to me, I still wear your palette, like I'm still trying to make it last and <laughs> that means so much to me. So, yeah, it's really nice. It sounds like you worked really closely with, yeah. with Models Preferred. Do you yes. have or did you have a favourite yeah. product that you created? I actually did because we, we tried to not create too many because I think that's where it goes wrong is yeah. when you're trying to do too much, that's when the quality – uh, suffers yeah and so it was is about quality over quantity with the products and I think that we I loved the eyeshadow palette because the eyeshadows were really good because my thing was always when you put an eyeshadow on your hand mm. you know how you're like you have to use so much to get the color yeah and I was like that is my number one pet hate <laughs> with things so we cannot have that happen um so I really loved those because they were really really um intense with the yeah. with the color but the highlight the highlight mm. was the Best. It was called the strobing palette. It was called strobing at the time. I think now they've gone back to calling it highlighting. But that was my favourite thing because just for that glow, yeah. such an Australian thing with all yeah. our little it you really know, is. sun kiss glow. Really we love is. a glow. Bronzer um, and highlighter. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. So I loved doing those. So we're, we're actually looking into maybe just doing some highlighting packages because they, they actually sold out within, I think it was two weeks. Crazy. Which is insane. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Did you get to keep a little stash for yourself after yes, production? Yes. I've got one left. <laughs> oh. But you know, you're not supposed to use makeup after a few yeah. months. So I've got to, I've got to get rid of it. But I just kind of have it just to remember like how the product yeah. feels and looks. Yeah. It's your little baby yeah. holding on to it. Yeah. You show my kids one day. <laughs> wow. So let's chat about future Sam. Yes. Is there anything we can expect? From you soon. We've got the new album. The new album. Yeah, I've been super focused on music this year because I think from the show it was like, you know, X Factor happened and then it's go, 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 go and you're chasing yeah. radio and you're trying to stay relevant and then I had all these incredible things that were happening for me like, you know, all the acting that I did and, you know, Home and Away and and then the the makeup and I had a jewellery line and the brass and things. And <laughs> Everyone wanted all a piece these of you. Mi- oh, yeah. Thank God. I mean, and I'm so <laughs> grateful. I'm so grateful that I was working so much. But I, I really wanted to take time to go write because when you're writing, you're in a studio, you're locked in a room in a studio and you can't can't do all those other things yeah. um, if you really want to give everything to your project. So I've really taken the time with that. So I'm my focus for next year is the album coming out and kind of doing a, a few fun things that are in the pipeline. 
Exciting. Yeah. Well, personally, as a big Christmas fan, <gasps> yes. there's 11 Mondays until Christmas, <gasps> oh my in gosh. case you were wondering. <laughs> I was. I was. <laughs> I knew it. And um, last year you dropped an incredible Christmas. Oh, thank you. I love that album. <gasps> I do too. Oh, oh, that I'm makes so me glad. so happy. Thank you. I am the biggest Christmas fan same, ever. Same, same. <laughs> Can we expect any Santa tunes coming from you this year? <laughs> well, I feel like it would be rude not to add a song be. to the album. Exactly. Um, you know, <laughs> right? I think I need to do like another carol and re-put the album out or something. It, it was so much fun doing that because so I'm a huge Christmas fan too. Oh, my gosh. And Incredible. I'm a caroler. Like as soon yeah. as it's not weird to start playing carols, I'm playing carols. Yeah. So 100%. Same page. Yeah. <laughs> Same page. <laughs> okay. So we have to finish with yes. our beauty quick fire questions. Yes, I love these. Yes. So number one, yeah. if you could only use one beauty product for the rest of your life, what would it be? This is so hard, but I've thought about this. <laughs> I thought this may be a question. And I've got to go with my eyelash curler because I have Ooh. dead straight lashes, De- like beyond straight. They even kind of go that way. Uh, <laughs> if for everyone listening, I'm talking about down. So I have to curl my lashes. That's my number one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. 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 What one word would you use to describe your beauty routine? Oh, uh, quick. Yeah, I've had to learn to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your biggest beauty fail? Oh, um, oh, there's so many. <laughs> so many. I'm going to go with uh, colour, shadow, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's tough to pull off mm. and I think it needs to be very um, very thought about. It needs to <laughs> yeah. be perfect. Yeah, perfect. And no yeah. lip if you're going with the colour eye. Mm. Yeah. The beauty trend you've never mastered? The I think the dewy look. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'm not amazing at that. I, I, I'm I'm good at like stay, like making it stay all day, but yeah. the dewy trend I'm, I'm not great at. Yeah. yeah. When do you feel you're most beautiful? Actually, when I'm tan, mm-hmm. whether that be fake baked or real, um, <laughs> sunscreen, kids. But I, I would say when I'm when I'm tan and my freckles are out a little bit and my hair's natural from the ocean, that's actually when I feel the most beautiful. Yeah. And our very very last question: If you could go back to your 15 or 16 year old self, Ooh. what advice would you give her? I would say back yourself, girlfriend. Believe in yourself <laughs> because at the end of the day, you actually are amazing. So believe in yourself. Stop doubting yourself. Oh, <laughs> lovely advice. Amazing yeah. advice. Thank you so much for coming thank in thank today. Thank you. It was really fun. <laughs> I mean, firstly, voice of an angel. Indeed, indeed. So sweet. I love so- her. I'm very excited for this new album too. Oh, yes. But we will leave the link to her new single in the show notes for you. Bounce was released last Thursday. So get around it, folks. Done. (sighs) That's all the time we have today, girlfriends. But please make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Do so. Please rate, review. Means we can get into more ear holes each and every week. And don't forget... Slide into our DMs on Instagram at Beauty Boss Podcast and make sure you tell us what you want to hear on the podcast and who you want to hear it from. Indeed, indeed. Next week, we will be bringing you another interview with another one of our favourite beauty girl bosses, so make sure you tune in. But until then, don't squeeze your pimples. They'll go red. They'll go scabby. Leave them alone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll do the bye again. That's terrible. <laughs> bye. Ha <laughs> <laughs>